Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the St. Jane Luxury Skin Ritual Pore Smoothing Sunscreen. So this is a sunscreen that does not have any chemical sunscreen ingredients in it and it also doesn't have any sunscreen boosters in it and I have actually been doing quite well with this one and I have been liking it quite a bit so I thought that it would be good to tell you a bit about that. And then in addition, the YouTube channel that is called Angie Hot and Flashy, she released her list of what she feels are the best 15 mineral sunscreens of all time. Now, I looked at that list, and it does turn out that a lot of those sunscreens that are on that list do have sunscreen boosters in them. And sunscreen boosters are really unapproved chemical sunscreens that really aren't any different than the other chemical sunscreens that are on the market. And those do irritate my face pretty consistently. So I am making a big effort to avoid those particular kinds of sunscreens. But there are a number of products on the Angie Hot Flashy list that do look, look like they had potential for me and that do seem to be free of any kind of chemical sunscreens or sunscreen boosters. So I will talk to you about which ones those are and let you know which ones I am most interested in trying myself. And then I also will be sharing with you my updated lists of all of the sunscreens that I have found that I think do have potential for me anyway because they don't have sunscreen boosters in them or chemical sunscreens and they don't have other ingredients that I know will be irritating for me. And so first a little bit of information about me. I'm 59 years old and I do have dry and sensitive skin. And I have tried more than a thousand skincare products, including sunscreens, over the past three years. And I have found that many of them do irritate my skin. And specifically that there are certain ingredients that are in many different products that do irritate my skin. And I know that these ingredients tend to be irritating for many other people as well. And so I have decided just not to talk about products that contain those ingredients on this channel. And so this video is part of an ongoing series of videos in which I am looking for sunscreens that don't irritate my skin. And what I have found, it, again, is that many of the sunscreens that are on the market that claim to be mineral sunscreens actually do have sunscreen boosters on them. And the most common sunscreen boosters that we know that are out there are uh, three of them that are called, first of all, butyloctyl salicylate, or BOS, and then there's one that is called tridecyl salicylate, which is very similar to BOS, and then there is one that is called ethyl ferulate. And I recently read an article by a team of researchers uh, from Harvard Medical School. They're dermatologists, and they did a study where they uh, looked at both ethyl ferulate and BOS, and they found that these really are pretty much exactly the same as the approved chemical sunscreens that are on the market. So they absorb UV light in the same way. They are protecting against UVB rays, but not UVA1 uh, in the same way that most chemical sunscreens are protecting from just that particular kind of UV rays. And in addition, they are absorbed into the body, into, through the skin into the body in the same way that those uh, approved chemical sunscreens are. And in terms of the chemical structure, they are also very similar. So for instance, BOS is uh, extremely similar in terms of the chemical structure to the approved chemical sunscreen that is called octosalate. So I did an overview video on this a couple months ago, and then since then I have been looking really hard at ingredient lists for many different supposedly mineral sunscreens to find out what they actually do have in them. And what I have found is that more than half of the supposedly mineral sunscreens on the market do have these sunscreen boosters in them. And it is my experience that these always do irritate my skin quite a bit, and really almost more than anything else on the market. And so therefore, if I, I've realized that if I'm going to use any kind of sunscreens on my skin, that I'm really going to have to look into just the ones that don't contain these sunscreen boosters in them and focus on those. And so now that I have tried out a number of real mineral sunscreens that don't have these boosters in them, I do find that I'm doing much better with them and that my skin is not having the same level of irritation that it was having when I was inadvertently trying a 
the mineral sunscreens that actually did contain those boosters. So as I say, I did an overview video on this topic a couple of months ago. And then since then, I had been doing a few more videos on this topic and looking at individual sunscreens. And I am putting these all in a playlist that is called SPF products. So if you're interested in this topic, then you may want to look at all of the videos that are on that playlist and see if any of those look interesting to you. Now, I do have very sensitive skin, and I thought for a very long period of time in my life that I wasn't able to wear any kind of sunscreens, even the mineral kind, for unknown reasons. And at, for a while, I was living in the Southwest, and that is when I started relying mostly on other kinds of strategies to protect my skin from the sun, but, because I do think that that's really important, especially when it comes to my facial skin. And so the first thing that I started to do was to wear SPF 50 hats with the wide brim like this one. So this one is from a company called Sunday Afternoons and I actually have a whole collection of these hats. And I do wear these whenever I am out in the sun for even a few minutes. And I do think that this has been really effective in and of itself in terms of protecting my skin from the sun. So even when I was living in an area with really bright sunlight, I found that uh, my skin was not getting burned when I was wearing a hat like this, and that actually my skin was not getting any more tan during the summer months. I also do rely on good sunglasses. So for instance, these are ones that are transitions that will become dark if I go outside. And then in other cases, for instance, when I'm in the car, I will wear a pair of sunglasses that is totally dark all the time. And I also tend to avoid the sun for the most part. So I do go out and walk my dog for an hour or two a day on the hills here up in the upper Midwest, but I usually go out either first thing in the morning or at a dawn, or I go out toward dusk when the UV light is not very strong. And if I'm out during other periods of the day, then I will try to seek out shade during those times. And then there's a few other things that I do to protect my skin. I think that the most important of these is not using retinol, which does sensitize the skin towards UV light. And uh, I rarely use things like AHA acids because I think that that's, those are things that are really harsh on my skin to begin with. And the fact that they're making my skin more sensitive to the sun, that is an additional deterrent for me to be interested in using those products. And I also have a really good diet. I, I I consume an awfully lot of omega-3 and an awfully lot of uh, high quality good produce. And so I think that that might also be helpful as well, or at least there is some literature on that. So all in all, I feel like even though I really haven't used any sunscreens for my adult life, I feel like my face is doing pretty well in terms of how it is holding up and how it is looking. And I think that the main reason for that is wearing a hat like this every single time I'm out in the sun uh, for the past 15 years. I think that's been really, really helpful. But it also is the case that I think that uh, having a multi-pronged approach to pr sun protection is a lot better than just using one method. And so I do feel like now that I have the potential of finding some sunscreens that are not irritating, that having those as one of the tools in my tool bag to protect myself from the sun, that that may be a really good thing as well. So again, for the sunscreens, I have been uh, continuing to update my lists in terms of the sunscreens that I have found that do not have any sunscreen boosters or chemical sunscreens in them. And so I put them on some lists that I'll show you on the screen so that you can screenshot those if you are interested in them. I also have been keeping track to the extent that I've been able to find out the information on whether or not these particular sunscreens have nano uh, zinc or nano titanium dioxide or whether they're non-nano and some people prefer one or the other and I've talked about the reasons for and against that in some of my previous videos. In addition, I tend to be really sensitive to fragrances, uh, even if they're naturally processed fragrances and especially certain essential oils and so I've been keeping track of that information on these lists as well.
Now, as I said, for this channel, I really have uh, decided that it's not a good idea for me to ever use any kind of synthetic fragrance, and I also think that it's really bad for my particular skin anyway to use any parabens. So again, I'm not talking about products that contain those ingredients on this channel at all, so I have omitted those products from these lists. And for the sunscreens that I found that claim to be mineral sunscreens, but that do have the sunscreen boosters in them, I am making separate lists to accumulate that information. And then of the products that are on these lists of ones that I might consider, I have actually either purchased or obtained samples of a, a good number of them. So it's going to take me a little while to go through all of those products because I do have really sensitive skin. And in some cases, if my skin gets messed up, either by trying a sunscreen or by trying some other kind of product, then I need to take a little break and let my skin come back into balance. And in addition, I don't want to provide any kind of misleading information on this channel, so it does take me a little while before I feel comfortable enough in terms of having used a product enough times to suggest that it's actually working for me, either in terms of not being irritating and also in terms of its performance for me. But I am hoping that eventually I can get through a whole bunch of these sunscreens and I'm going to, I'm thinking that I'll just do individual videos on each one that I review. Uh, and then after I collect a bunch of them, then I will do another video comparing them against one another. So let's talk first about the Angie Hot and Flashy picks. And so Angie is a YouTuber who is in her early 60s and she focuses on makeup and skincare for older women and she uses a, quite a lot of retinol and so she's particularly concerned about sun exposure considering her retinol usage. And so every year she tries out a bunch of new sunscreens, uh, mostly mineral sunscreens, and then she does a video based on those sunscreens. And she uh, demonstrates what they are like when they go on the skin. She's putting on a, a good bit of it, you know, a quarter teaspoon on her face to show what they're like when you're, us when you're using a, a sufficient amount of it to give you the SPF coverage that is stated on the container. And then she will talk about how it has worked for her under foundation as well. And she does not seem to be super sensitive. She's certainly not as sensitive as I am to products. She has stated, I've noticed that she doesn't especially like fragranced products. And she actually, when I first came out with my sunscreen booster video, right after that, she started talking a little bit about sunscreen boosters in a couple of her videos. And in particular, what she discussed is that there was one of her previous picks that she really liked, which is from a company called Elta MD. And this one is called UV AOX Elements SPF 50, I guess now. And what she said is that in the past, this one did not include any BOS in it, but that they had changed the formula and that they had added some BOS to it. And she said that for her, she thought that it was irritating, in particular for her neck. So I thought that that was a really good thing that she did bring up the sunscreen boosters on her channel at, on a couple of different occasions. But in the more recent videos where she has talked about uh, her 2024 uh, picks that she's tried out this year, and then she's talked about her all-time favorites, she didn't bring up the boosters at all in those, and uh, many of the products that she did bring up do have sunscreen boosters in them. And I do think that probably most of the products that she has tried, from what I can tell, actually do have sunscreen boosters in them. So about a month or so ago, she came out with her 2024 picks, and I actually discussed those in one of my previous videos on sunscreens. Uh, this was the Lion Pose one. And in this video, she talked about her top 15 sunscreens. And of those, I think that there are five of them that do not have sunscreen boosters in them, including her top pick. So her current top choice of all of the mineral sunscreens that are on the market, this one is called Healthy Skin Lab Protect SPF 50. And this was uh, her top choice for this year. And then she's again given it her, her 
Best of All Time Award. So this one sold out within a couple of hours after she just released this ranking. And it has now just come back in stock on Amazon. And so I did order that. And so I will be giving that a try at some point, hopefully before the end of the summer. Uh, that one is uh, about $40 if you buy it from Amazon. It's, it's quite a bit more expensive if you buy it from their website because they put a big shipping charge on it. But I think that this one does uh, look good based on everything that Angie has said about it and from some other things that I have read, so I'm looking forward to that one. There's another one that is called Australian Gold Botanical BB Sunscreen. This one is from Australia. It is only $13. This one does have some cyclic silicones in it. And it is available on Amazon and Vitacost and some other places, so I do want to do a review on that one. At some point, I was looking into that one before. And then there is one that is available at Sephora and that I did already get a sample from Sephora, from my local Sephora store. And so I do want to be trying that one out. And that one is the First Aid Beauty Weightless Liquid Mineral Sunscreen, SPF 30. And that one is also available at Ulta. I did see it there as well. Now the fourth one is from a company called Agency, and Agency is a company where if you want prescription strength retinol, then you can talk to a dermatologist or a healthcare provider over the phone, and they can ask you some questions about your skin and then prescribe you something that might be appropriate for you. And uh, I'm not really interested in using retinol at all, even, re even the non-prescription kind that is less strong. I think that when I have used retinol, it's been irritating to my skin. And also, again, I'm not interested in uh, retinols because I don't want to make my skin more sensitive to the sun. But I do think that there are a lot of people, especially women who are getting older, that uh, have uh, gotten memberships with Agency and Angie Hot and Flashy, she is one of their ambassadors. So I guess she is getting some kind of payment for talking about their products and being in their ads. And so she is suggesting that if you are a member of Agency, then she tried out their sunscreen and that she did really like that one. Uh, this is called Silk Screen. It is SPF 50. It is uh, $36. And I think that it makes sense for them to be offering a good sunscreen because if you are using retinol, then you really should be using a really good sunscreen and a good hat, please. But unfortunately, if you are not a member of Agency, then you can't apparently get this sunscreen. So I don't think I'm going to be trying this out unless someone supplies me with a sample of it. But if you have tried out this Agency product, uh, then please let us know what you think of it because uh, it is one that Angie is recommending. And then number five is one that I have already purchased but that I haven't tried out yet. And this is called the Neutrogena Tinted Mineral Sunscreen. It is $28. And so I do think that this one looks like it might have potential. So hopefully I can try this one before the summer is over as well. So of the sunscreens that Angie has suggested as being her favorites, almost all of the rest of them do have BOS or tridecyl salicylate in them. So those are not ones that I am very interested in trying out. Uh, one that is an exception is the CeraVe. Now that one has that chemical that is called DESM in it. And this one I believe is a sunscreen booster. There is a um, YouTuber that is named Lab Muffin who has a chemistry PhD from a good Australian university that has been looking into that. And it is her belief that that is a sunscreen booster and that that one also is similar in chemical structure to some of these others in terms of how it functions. And I don't know if I in particular am reactive to DESMs. So I wouldn't mind trying out a product at some point that has a DESM in it just to see if I do react to that. But I don't think that the CeraVe one is probably a good idea because it does have some other ingredients in it that I do think that I am reactive to based on my previous experiences with products. So one of those is called um, B 
Behentramonium methosulfate, and that is in a lot of shampoo and conditioner type products. And I think that when we put that in skincare in particular, that my uh, skin really does not like that very much. And then there is a chemical that is called triethanolamine, and I think that that one's problematic for me. And in general, I have not had good experiences at all with any of the CeraVe products that I have tried, and I have tried quite a few of them over time, and that is a line that I've really just given up on. Now, the other product here uh, is from a, I think this is a Korean product, and it is from a company called ISDIN, and that one does actually not seem to have any chemical sunscreen in it, as far as I can tell, or sunscreen boosters, but that one does have unspecified fragrance in it, and Angie said that it was a, a fragrance that was quite strong and that she found to be unpleasant, and so therefore she was not using that product for that reason, even though for for other reasons that it might be attractive to people. So I won't be trying that one out as well because I'm not interested in products with fragrance. Now another YouTube channel that I watch fairly regularly is by a journalist uh, from Scotland and her name is Claire Johnston and the name of the channel is The Honest Channel and I think she's in like her early 50s and the idea of the channel is to talk about uh, strategies for women who are getting older to continue to look better. And Claire Johnston, she says that she prefers mineral sunscreens and so she picked out uh, six of them I think that uh, were her favorites. And of the six on that list, uh, three of them actually do have sunscreen boosters in them. But I'm a little bit interested in the other three that she recommends. So one of those is the Aveeno Calm Plus Restore Daily Moisturizer. She likes that one because it has oatmeal in it and she's Scottish, so she has an, a particular fondness for oatmeal. I really like oatmeal too, and the issue that I often have with oatmeal in terms of consuming it is that oatmeal is one of those crops that both in the U.S. and in Scotland that it tends to be sprayed really heavily with uh, glyphosate or Roundup as what they call a pre-harvest desiccant to dry it out. Uh, so that it doesn't get uh, moldy or that uh, it, it can be harvested earlier in the season. And I find that uh, when I get exposure to at least this much glyphosate that I do tend to react to that. And I think that uh, that is one of the chemicals that I do react to the most. So therefore, it probably shouldn't have come as a big surprise for me that I have reacted pretty consistently to products uh, cosmetic type products that do have oats as ingredients in them. So even though I think the oats are probably great for me, uh, I think that probably that chemical is not really good for my skin. The issue with glyphosate is that what it seems to do really, really well is to kill off all the good bacteria and to allow bad mold and bad bacteria to grow better, especially bad mold, and that's kind of the last thing that my face needs because my microbiome seems to be fairly fragile in general. So I'm a little suspicious about this Aveeno product, but other than that, I think that the ingredient list looks okay to me. There's a second one that is called Blue Lean Blue Vado Sun Fix, and that one has a chemical called methylene blue in it, and I'm not sure how I feel about this one. I'm not sure if it actually does what it's supposed to, and I'm not sure how I would react to that. I don't think I've tried any cosmetic products with that in it. But that one also contains a number of different essential oils, including rose geranium oil. And my skin does tend to be fairly uh, bothered by a number of different essential oils, and rose geranium oil just seems to be plain uh, an allergen for me, and I do seem to react to that no matter how much of that is in a product and even when I use it on my body. So I won't be trying that one out either. And then there's a third one that I have been looking into for a while and that I would be interested in using, and that one is called Sumbum Mineral Face Lotion. That one is a little more affordable, and I do have that in my box of products to try, so hopefully I can get around to that one at some point in the foreseeable future. And so now let's talk about the product that I've been trying out over the past couple of weeks. And this is called the St. Jane Luxury Sun Ritual Pore Smoothing SPF 30. 
And this is sold as a clean at Sephora and also at Credo, so it does meet their standards. Admittedly, their standards are not very high. This uh, container comes with 1.7 ounces in it, so it's not a cheap product, but I do think that the ingredient lists look really good, and I also think that it has been performing really well for me, both in terms of using it on its own and also using it under at least some kinds of foundation. So this product does contain some silicones in it. It doesn't include sil uh, cyclic silicones. It includes a dimethicone, and it is made in the USA. It doesn't include any essential oils or other processed fragrances. It does include, however, uh, several different extracts in terms of flowers, and so it does have a little bit of a floral scent to it. So the extracts that it includes are jasmine, hibiscus, and uh, desert rose. And I tend to do a lot better when products list uh, things as being extracts rather than essential oils, and that has been the case with this as well. I actually feel like this has been quite good for my face in terms of not irritating it, even compared to many of the other products that I think are acceptable when it comes to foundations or other kinds of uh, products with a similar consistency that I might use all over my face. Now, I will say that I don't mind the smell of jasmine. That's actually a, a smell that I like a lot. Not everyone likes that smell, and some people do react really strongly to jasmine in the way that I do react to rose geranium oil. So it really depends on your particular uh, sensitivities and which, thing, which fragrances are bothersome or pleasant for you. But I have found this one to be very nice. The last sunscreen that I reviewed was the Lion Pose one, and that one had cucumber extract in it and I thought that that one smelled really strongly of cucumbers and I thought that that was tolerable but I was not crazy about that scent and I think that for me this has been a much more pleasant scent but that could be a matter of opinion. So when I first started to figure out which kinds of ingredients I wanted to be avoiding, this was actually one of the first sunscreens that I zeroed in on as being a possibility because it was available at both Credo and Sephora. And I did buy a bottle of this back during the Sephora sale. Now, Sephora was at the time, they had a little kit that had uh, like 10 or 12 different sunscreens in it, and they had a sample bottle of this in it, and I thought a lot about buying that, but when I looked at all the other sunscreens in the kit, none of the other ones were appropriate because all of those either had the sunscreen boosters in them or they had chemical sunscreens. So I went ahead and bought this whole bottle. And it could be the case that if you spend a lot of time looking around, you might be able to find a small bottle of this somewhere. Obviously they have one because they put it in that little kit. And this is not a cheap sunscreen to buy, but I have been liking it well enough that I think I, I may actually get enough use out of this bottle of it that will make it worthwhile my having purchased it. And then the other reason that I decided to focus on, on this one as one of the first ones that I tried is because it did seem to be getting pretty good reviews on both Credo and on uh, Sephora in terms of the user reviews. And I also did see a couple of people uh, on YouTube uh, review it and say that they had liked it. So one person that I do follow is a person who's, uh, she's around 30, I think. Her name is Morgan Turner. And she reviews a lot of uh, makeup, cosmetic products, not so much skincare. And she asked her audience which of the uh, products that is, were in that Sephora kit of the sunscreens, which of those she should try first. And a whole bunch of people did say that they thought that this was a good one, and so she did try that one. And she said that she liked that one a lot, and so she was going to keep using it, and she hadn't bothered to try any of the other products that were in the kit. So I thought that that was a pretty good endorsement. And she really was looking for something that she could wear under foundation. And so I thought that it must be working for her under a variety of different foundations because she does try out an awfully lot of them. And then the other person that I saw try this a, a few weeks ago was is a... Uh, a YouTuber who is a bit older, she's about my age, I think. Uh, her name is Abby Bliss White, and she mostly reviews luxury uh, 
products, luxury cosmetics, and so she talked about that someone had suggested this to her for use under foundation, and so she tried that on in one of the videos, and based on at least how it performed for her when she was putting on her makeup that day, she seemed to be fairly happy with it. So based on all of that, I thought that this would be the, one of the sunscreens that might be really good, especially for people that have an interest in wearing this under makeup. So I did give it a try, and I have actually been impressed with it, especially for that reason. And Angie Hot and Fleshy has not tried this product at all, as far as I could find. So I would be interested in seeing what she thinks of it. Now in general, when it comes to things that I spread all over my face, like foundations or moisturizers or sunscreens, and when I leave them in place, then an awfully lot of those products do irritate my skin. And I have figured out an awfully lot of ingredients that are consistently irritating for me, but in some cases it is really uh, uncertain why particular things are irritating. In this case, I don't feel like this has actually been irritating to me. I think that my skin has been doing really, really well with it. And I have worn it uh, on a number of different days. And on one occasion, I did sleep in it uh, for most of the night uh, inadvertently. And I thought that my skin was fine when that happened. And so I am feeling pretty good about it in terms of it being something that I can turn to and use when I need to. And if I compare this to the Lion Pose one that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, I would say that Probably both of these are, are pretty good in terms of not being irritating. I would say that this one might even be uh, even less irritating than the Lion Pose, which is an accomplishment. I'm really happy to be finding some things that are working for me. Now, one thing that I say fairly frequently on this channel when I am reviewing foundations is that I am really not too crazy about using silicone-based foundations on my skin, and that even if they are not causing me irritation, I think that if I wear a product like that on a regular basis, that my skin quality does tend to deteriorate. I think that the reason for that is because silicone tends to put a barrier on the skin that kind of traps dirt and oil and dead skin cells and fungi and other kinds of uh, debris underneath it and that, that tends to be irritating to my skin, particularly if I don't manage to get those products off of my skin. And there are quite a lot of sunscreens as well as uh, foundations that do stick very tenaciously to the skin. And so I do work really hard to get those off using a variety of different oil cleansers and the one that I especially like is the Lisa Eldridge uh, cleanser, but that in general, I tend to find that I can use silicone foundations occasionally, but that I think it's better for me not to try to use them on a regular basis. And I think that the same thing really applies to sunscreens. Now, in this case, this does have silicone in it. It has primarily dimethicone, and I feel like compared to some of the sunscreens or foundations that I have tried, that this one does come off fairly readily if I just use, regardless of what kind of oil-based cleanser I am using. So it's not quite as tenacious as some of the products that are on the market in terms of it being waterproof, which I think is a good thing. But if you're looking for something that is going to be more waterproof, then this might not be one that you're looking for. Now, one thing that I found particularly noteworthy about this product is that I do feel that it absorbed into my skin fairly easily and that even when I used a four, full quarter teaspoon of it on my face, which is the amount that is usually recommended to get the uh, SPF that is stated on the container, I did not find that I had a hard time getting that to absorb into my skin and that I felt like once it did go onto my skin that it looked fairly natural. Now I wouldn't say that my skin looked as good with this on as it does without it on. I think that it does uh, emphasize the wrinkles and other texture on my skin a little bit. And I'm actually not wearing any sunscreen today in this video that I'm filming right now. But I think that compared to many other products that are out there that I have tried and also observing Angie putting different sunscreens on her skin, I think that this one does a really, really good job of blending into the skin and absorbing into the skin and having a nice texture. So it doesn't feel greasy, it doesn't feel unpleasant, 
And I do feel that at least if I'm using silicone makeup, that it has gone on really well. So I haven't tried this very much, but I did try it with my Lisa Eldridge foundation, which is a silicone-based foundation, and I felt like that makeup went on perfectly fine over the sunscreen. I don't think there was any pilling. I don't think that it looked problematic. I don't think that it uh, made, it. they worked poorly with one another. I think that it was a very nice mix. Now this does, go on kind of wet and I did find that I did best if I would wait for like five minutes or so after I put it on before I put on any other makeup. But otherwise I think that it has worked really really well for me in terms of serving as a, an undercoating for whatever makeup I put on whether it's been that foundation or whether it's been blush or other kinds of products they've all seemed to work well for it. But again, I haven't tried it with a lot of different things and I'm not sure that a silicone product like this would work really well with the makeup that was not silicone based. So I eventually would like to give a try to the sunscreens that I actually do well with to see how they do with different kinds of makeup and to try to do that more systematically. But I do think that there's some potential with this one to work well with makeup. And I certainly feel like when I used the Lion Pose sunscreen that it was really, really hard for me to put that full quarter teaspoon on my face. Uh, that uh, was really an unpleasant thing and I don't think that I would wear this that much very often. Whereas this one, I do feel like it was much, much easier to put that full quarter teaspoon on it and that that would actually be something that would be doable. Now the Lion Pose one that does have a much higher SPF, I think the SPF is 43, 45, something like that. And so that's much higher than the 30 SPF with this one. But from what I can tell looking at the literature, it seems to be the case that what really matters with sunscreen is how much you put on and that the SPF that is in the product matters less. I talked about that in the Lion Pose video. Now, on the other hand, I would like to point out that this one only has a level of zinc oxide of 10%, and that compared to other sunscreens that do not include sunscreen boosters, that seems like a fairly low amount to me. And actually, when I asked Credo about how to tell which products have sunscreen boosters in them, what they told me is that I should look for the level of the zinc oxide, and that if it was around 20%, then I should I could uh, feel more confident that it didn't have the sunscreen boosters in it. Now, I am not sure why this one only has 10%. Uh, apparently, it has been done some kind of a testing where uh, people were putting the sunscreen on like one half of their face, and then they're exposed to UV light, and you see how long it takes one side to burn versus the other side. Now, one thing to know about this product is that it does appear to have nano zinc in it, or at least I haven't found any evidence that it is not nano zinc. And so therefore, that may not be a good sunscreen to wear if you are going to be going to the beach because nano zinc may have a negative impact on coral reefs in the same way that chemical sunscreens do. In addition, there are a lot of people that are just th concerned for theoretical reasons about nano zinc because of whether or not it may be absorbed into the body and what it might do if it is absorbed into the body. And I'm not sure I feel entirely comfortable about it myself, but I will say that this particular sunscreen does perform really well in terms of uh, disappearing into my face. And I think that a lot of the reason for that is because of the use of nano zinc rather than non nano zinc. So although it does seem to be the case that it might make sense that if the particle size is smaller and that the sunscreen is smoothing onto the skin more easily that maybe you would need less of it in the product. I haven't actually seen anything so far that suggests that nano zinc will allow companies to get the same level of SPF at a lower level of zinc than if they're using non nano zinc, but I think that that's possible. I think it also could be possible that some of these extracts that are in this product, including these floral extracts or this green tea extract, that conceivably that could be helping a little bit to increase the SPF in a laboratory setting. 
but I'm not sure about any of this and I am still a little perplexed as to how they are getting a 30 SPF when they only have a 10% level of zinc. So I think that what I would suggest is that if you are concerned about burning, that you might want to be careful with this one at first until you get a sense of how well it's working for you. I'm not really the person to test that because I haven't had any sunburns for uh, 15 or 20 years since I am always wearing my hat and I'm not going to stop wearing my hat just because I'm wearing this sunscreen. But I do think that uh, I would be a little bit cautious about this one and I think that it's possible that this level of SPF of 30, it might be a little overstated. And in terms of the tint, I thought that this disappeared really easily on my skin. It is kind of a beige type of a color. I don't know how well this would work on people that have much lighter skin than I do or much darker skin than I do. So if that describes you then and you try this one, then I would like to know how you do with it in terms of it looking nice on your skin. But for me, I do think that it uh, really disappeared in my skin and it was pretty much the same color as my skin when I did rub it in. So for me, again, I do feel like the sunscreens that I'm using are more like extra protection against the sun. In addition to what I'm already doing, I don't think that I'm going to spend more time out in the sun just because I have one of these sunscreens on. But I do think that if I do want to spend time in the sun, and particularly if I want to be wearing a foundation of some kind, that this would be one that I would definitely consider because I do think that it performs very well. On the other hand, I am trying out a lot of other sunscreens at present. And although I really like this one, there's one that I'm trying out right now that is actually brand new to the market that I think might be working even better. You're welcome to look at those lists and try to guess which one that might be. So I hopefully will be finishing my testing and doing a video on that one soon. So I think that it might be the case that I might be able to find some that are better options even than this one, but I do think this is a good one and I have been uh, pretty impressed with it. Now I did notice a few weeks ago that St. Jane has come out with a new product that is a body sunscreen and I looked at the ingredient list for that and that one does not have apparently any chemical sunscreens or sunscreen boosters in it and I do think that that ingredient list looks pretty good so I would be interested in trying that one at some point in the near future. So thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. And always, if there are any sunscreens that you have tried that have worked well for you, then I would like to know what those are in the comments section. Or if there are sunscreens that you were hoping would work for you that did not, then I'd like to hear about that as well. Or if there are any sunscreens that you're especially interested in that you would like for me to try sooner rather than later, then please let me know that as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, then I hope you will go ahead and do that. And Coco and I love you very much. So thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.